this video, we're going to find out what is the best traction aid. We've got cleats, we have the snow sock, and of course, old fashioned chains. And we're gonna run this Toyota RAV4 through a number of tests to find out which is best for the money. In this test, we are using this 1999 Toyota RAV4. It's a basic smooth running car with front wheel drive and relatively worn all season tires. Once again, the goal of this test is not to be a judge of vehicle performance, but of traction aid performance. And being just front wheel drive with these pretty worn out all seasons, this vehicle is definitely gonna do that. So let's talk about how we're gonna perform this test. What we have here is a wide open hill, a very even slope across the hill, and we're going to run the four traction aids in fresh tracks up the hill. So we're not gonna use, for example, the same route just in case the conditions change. I want the tracks to be fresh. And the good thing is during the course of the test, we're probably not gonna see any snow melt because it's currently negative 12 12 degrees Fahrenheit out here, that's negative 24 Celsius. So the first test is going to be driving up this hill using just the tires. Just the tires that are on this car, we're gonna mark it out with some cones and time how long it takes to get from the bottom of the hill to the top. Now obviously if you're driving in the snow, we always recommend you use a good set of snow tires. Um, but for this video, we are just testing out traction aid, which are very, very common. There's all sorts of different types. Now it used to be that there were just chains. Now there's cleat style and socks. And we're gonna see what the difference is between them. Now, facing up this uh, fairly steep hill at Tumbleweed Ranch. We got a good three, four inches of snow here. Um, and I'm lined up at the start cone. We're gonna time how long it takes to get to the top of the hill. First with just the all season tires. Accelerating in three, two, one, here we go. Now I'm going to be kind of ginger on the accelerator here, right? I don't want to get a ton of wheel spin. I want to maintain traction as best I can because that's how you're going to accelerate the best with the most effectiveness. We're about to cross the finish cone now. That was not very fast. We only got up to about 10 miles an hour, but that's as fast as I could go with still maintaining traction. 16.84 seconds on that first run, just on the tires, no traction aid. So that's our baseline. Let's see if we can beat it. trying to do a braking test. So we need to get to the top of the hill, but he's not even able to make it to the top of the hill. He's getting a, a long running start this time. Here he goes. Oh yeah. for the braking test. So the braking test is gonna be pretty simple. I'm gonna accelerate up to 25 miles an hour and then hit the brakes hard when I get to the fence post. And then we're gonna measure and see how long it takes to stop this Toyota RAV4 on just the all season tires. So accelerating away, there's 10 miles an hour, 15, 16, up to 25, there's 25 and on the brakes, Full emergency braking, Ooh, a little bit sideways in this car. Let's see how long that took to stop the Toyota. Well, I stopped, got a little bit sideways, and there we have the cone. Let's see how long that took to stop on just the all season tires from 25 miles an hour. Six and a half feet. Let's see how that compares. Now we have our first tire traction aid, and this is the least expensive of all of them. These are some snow cleats, essentially. So this kit comes with gloves, but most importantly, it comes with these cleats that strap around the tire. You do three per tire on both front wheels, and you can see there's a lot of extra texture in here, even some metal spikes. So this will potentially make a big difference. Let's go ahead and throw them on the tires to find out. There we go, we have timer going to see how long it's gonna take Tommy and I, and we have not practiced this at all, so it may very well 
take us a couple minutes here, but... Oh, Case, I think you're supposed to go through that little um, yellow tab underneath. Oh, I see. So these are the owners, the, the user manual here. It says if you're using front wheel drive, put on the front wheels, go figure. Um, so there are recommendations on tire width. So this is intended for tire widths of 165 millimeters to 275 millimeters. So we are between that number. And then they give you this little tool to tighten them on and they recommend three per tire, which is not a terribly great tool, but if it works, I will say, compared to some traction aids that we've tried out in the past, this so far is really not that bad to hook up. When you say, Tom? No, it's pretty, pretty user, user explanatory. User explanatory, that's a term I've never heard before. Yeah, it's not really a term. <laughs> Alex had a good question, Case. Yeah? Alex was wondering why didn't they just give you a standard ratchet strap? Yeah, I mean, it could be weight, it could be cost, it, it could be trying to keep these lower profile. Lower cost, yeah. Lower cost, but I mean, the fact that these are only 60 bucks is one of the big advantages of them. Um, I also have to say, we've done a number of traction aids in the past, and this, this is by far not the hardest. Yeah, two of us working, well, one competent person and one incompetent person working we got done in nine minutes. Let's yeah. see what happens. So next up, we're gonna do our acceleration test with these traction cleats, if you uh, want to call them that, but basically these plastic pads with little teeth in them, hoping for a better result than this, the all season tires. All right, Alex, I'm ready. I'm gonna accelerate in three, two, one, go. Wow, so initially, a lot more grip. They do make quite a bit more noise because they do bounce the suspension up and down a little bit. I'm accelerating though significantly better and across the line. 10.24 seconds versus 16.84. 10.24. Wow, that's a pretty big difference there. Yeah, massive difference. You cut off over six seconds. Hey, sorry. Well, I'm going to do the braking test now and we'll see how these stop in comparison. He struggled big time getting up this hill on just the tires. And he's got much less momentum this time. Let's see if he can get up. Oh, yeah. Pretty significant difference. Oh, they do kick up quite a bit of quite a bit of terrain, though. He's throwing a lot of dirt. Good thing that's a, an old Rav4. We don't really care about the paint too much, uh, but it worked. Got him up the hill. Now the box says, do be careful of hard stopping with the traction cleats. So I'm going to be a little bit ginger with the brakes. I don't want to lock them up, although we do have ABS in this car. But I'm going to be firm pedal pressure. All right, here I go. 25 miles an hour, just like last time. There's 10 already. 15. 20, okay, okay, and there's 25, and hard on the brakes. Okay, well I did lock them up a little bit, but we did stop sooner than the cone, um, than the standard tires, let's see how much sooner. Interesting result there. Yeah. So when you slam on the brakes, basically it found what part of the tire was just rubber, and then it just slid on the rubber part with no traction aid. Interesting, did the tires lock up? Mm-hmm. Mm, so maybe I hit the brakes a little bit too hard. Now we did stop sooner than we did with the, than the rubber tires. But um, barely. But barely, not much sooner. Yeah, let's see what the difference is here. A whole six feet, seven inches shorter. So we stopped, we stopped in 70 feet versus 76 feet but not a huge difference in stopping with the cleats. All right, now I do want to do one more test of the traction aids. We have this ridiculously steep hill covered in snow. I don't think any of the traction aids are gonna allow the RAV4 to climb up the hill, but we're gonna see how far we can get with the different devices, starting with the cleats. I'm not sure we're gonna get very high. This is a really hard test, even in the dry, even for all wheel drive cars, but this is the ultimate test. Let's see how high we get with the traction cleats. So starting the acceleration. some brake. Uh huh. We've not exactly made it very high, huh? Let's throw up a lot of dirt. Okay. Alex, 
Let's measure that. How far do we make it? Six feet five inches up the hill. Let's see if we can beat that with the sock. Yeah, well, pretty dramatic uh, hole we dug there with the traction cleats. Oh, there you have it. If you want to dig a hole, these are the way to do it. Now, we did end up partly breaking one of these traction aids. However, uh, that's probably Tommy because you are not using them on a paved road but towards the end there, we started digging a hole in the ground, probably hit some rocks. Yeah, that's right. So it didn't do well with the, uh, the kind of the rugged terrain. However, I am pretty impressed with these. They drove pretty smooth. Now there's no speed recommendation in the manual. I probably wouldn't go much over 30 miles an hour with these, but even at 25, 30, they felt nice and smooth. They're easy to put on. And sure, we did break one, probably user error, but uh, for 60 bucks, pretty good. Yeah, really not bad for the price. And like you said, quick to put on. Next up, we are testing the auto sock. And and for $110, this is our second least expensive traction aid. There we go. Now, the way that these work is pretty cool. You basically just drape them over your wheel and tire, and then it adds all of this texture to basically the surface of your tire, which doesn't seem like it would do a ton, but We've tested these before and they are pretty impressive. Autosock claims that these are better than chains and they have kind of this meshy material which grips into the snow. Uh, the challenge with the Autosock is it's supposed to be much easier to put on than chains and in some cases that seems to be true. In other cases, it's not, right Kate? Yeah, we've used these before and it definitely took us a little bit of trial and error to figure out how to get them on there. Theoretically, that should be them on. And don't these usually center themselves as you start to drive a little bit? They do, yeah. And that took us, what, under four minutes to put these on? Yeah. So really, really quick. Half the time of the cleats. What is really cool about the auto sock is not only were they super simple to put on, but after just 10 feet of driving, they've already auto centered themselves. So you're not fussing with little adjusters to get them on. It's pretty good. Right, so next up the auto sock. Now, Autosock says that the max speed you can drive you that is 30 miles an hour, but we're gonna do the same test procedure. Nice, gentle acceleration right on the edge of grip. And what's cool is that hopefully, if this is better than the last one, I can accelerate quicker and be closer to that edge of grip. <laughs> In three, two, one, go. Okay, so not as aggressive in digging into the terrain as the last ones, but much smoother, very, very quiet. And across the line there. 11.47 seconds. So that first traction aid had these beat. How was that? 11.47. So a little over a second slower than the last go around. Yeah, that's interesting. So at least on this terrain, which is like four inches of snow covering um, a dirt surface, we didn't have quite as much kind of grip as we did with the previous ones, but they were much smoother and uh, also quieter as well. So let's see how they stop. So my initial impressions on the auto sock is they're really easy to put on. Um, they're very quiet compared to the previous traction device, but they don't feel like they have quite as much bite, at least in the soft snow. Maybe if we got to ice, that'd be a different story. Now they do feel more grippy than the stock tires, but look, we can't make it up this hill and we could with the other ones. Interesting. Gotta back on down and let's give it a little bit of a, oh, they fell off. That's not good. So I guess too much wheel spin, those things will fly right off. happen hop on it we'll go evaluate what happened so I got a little bit of wheel spin up there I was kind of saw the wheel left and right and they did not like that and they fell off so let's go reapply and then we'll try the braking test
Now, one quick word on the auto sock. You buy the auto sock to fit the vehicle. And that's awesome because there are many, many, many different tire sizes that the auto sock will fit. And then um, there's a smaller one and a bigger one, depending on your vehicle. The weird thing about the RAV4 though, is it kind of straddles two different auto sock sizes. So the RAV4 uses a really weird size. It's a 215-70R16, which really isn't listed in any of the auto sock sizes. However, I went with this one because it seemed to be the closest in the range, although we could have gone perhaps a size smaller and it would have fit perhaps a little bit better. So we learned that lesson from this experimentation. Um, it's kind of unfortunate though, because look at all the different sizes it fits, like a 205 70 R17 and a half, all the way up to um, like a 275 on this auto sock. And then the smaller one also has a wide range of sizes. So maybe next time when we do this test again, we'll try the smaller auto sock. Uh, other thing worth noting too, is that this car is supposed to have ABS braking. I did kind of a bad job in this video of modulating the brakes. I do apologize about that. I didn't really realize at first that the ABS wasn't working. So that's another thing we'll have to retest going forward. All right, here comes the braking test in the Toyota RAV4, 25 miles an hour, auto sock on. It's very hard to tell on this car when you're about to lock up the brakes. I don't think the ABS brakes are working even though it's supposed to have them. Good acceleration there. There's 20, there's 24, 25, and on the brakes there. <laughs> so basically virtually the same as the previous one. I did a little bit of threshold braking at time. But you can see we are at the same exact spot. Stopped, I mean, ever so slightly You're like an before. So we're, we're also right around 70 feet with the auto sock. Yeah, but the one on this side started coming off. Yeah, so the thing about the auto sock is it's tied to the tire width and profile of your vehicle. And on Amazon, we bought the ones that were supposed to fit this RAV4, but they're much looser than the last time we tried the auto sock. So it's worth noting that um, even though it says it'll fit, it may not fit perfectly right. Yeah, definitely still better than just the uh, straight up so, tires. Yeah, that's for sure. And really easy to put on, so. Yeah, it's better, it's an improvement. Let's go try it up our super steep hill. They may fall off, let's see what happens. All right, auto sock up our really steep hill. I scooted just a little bit to the right, so we have a fair shot. Now the thing with these is I'm gonna be very ginger on the accelerator. This is where we got stuck last time with the cleats. Yeah, same thing. We're also stuck in the same spot. Yeah, not going anywhere, so <laughs> the steep, Stevens to the hill might be a little bit too much for these traction aids. You're good. Yeah, so it's spinning inside of the sock. It's spinning inside the sock? Yeah. Yeah, these are definitely not tight enough. Um, yeah, they shouldn't be doing that. Interesting, very interesting. All right, we'll have to do a little bit more experimenting. Maybe we'll get a different size auto sock next time, even though these ones are supposed to be the right size. All right, Alex, how far do we make it with the auto sock? Four feet, eight inches. And last time we made it six feet. Feet? Six, about six, six, and six and a half feet. Six and a half feet, yeah. yeah. Okay, so a little bit worse. Yep. So, something else that we noticed, we do have a little tear here in our auto cell. Yeah, so we had um, a separation in the plastic on the first traction aid. We have a little bit of a tear on this guy. Is another tear? Oh, we got multiple tears, perhaps. Oh, is that just a crease? Certainly one big one there. So long-term durability, I think these, these are devices that'll get you unstuck potentially, but if you were running them even for a full day, I think you're probably gonna have to get new ones. It doesn't seem like they're built for longevity. I don't know that they'd last an hour on the highway, you know? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, well it said it's not meant to go over 30, right? Yeah, but so we didn't go over 30. No. But we were... I mean, we were pushing them, that's for yeah. sure. Yeah, we were, we were pushing them. Yeah, seeing how fast they could accelerate and also how running them... How fast they could stop, yeah. Yeah, and running them over dirt uh, and everything underneath the snow, so... Yeah. Not the easiest conditions for them compared to driving on a road, but that's uh, kind of a good way to test just how durable and how good they are. I agree. This is the, uh, the right side, passenger side, and didn't tear nearly as bad, but definitely still has uh, some rips and tears along the edges here. This seems to be the weak spot, is kind of the seam where this mesh side meets the part that actually goes over the tire. But yeah, there's holes all over this. Lastly, we have chains. This is the old school solution, and uh, these chains in particular are quality, apparently. Now, chains tend to run about 150 to $250, a lot of them around the $200 range. These ones actually came with the car. Uh, videographer Cole bought these 
So we don't know how much these exact ones cost, but that's really the pricing range. And Tommy, how excited are we to hook these up? Chains are one of those things where everyone hates it. Yeah. This is a different style of chain that we tried last time too. It is. We have like the old school spiky ones. These are I like the spring style. Yeah. Okay. We, got, we got we got we got warning messages here. Great. Looks like fun. Start the timer. Also included in the kit for our tire chains are these very handy gloves. Look at that. That. That is nice. I like that. Woo! Perfect. Keep your hands warm and dry. Make sure you don't get any grease anywhere. Tommy, it's too bad they didn't include a pair for you. Perfect. Let's do it. Cool. The other disadvantage of chains is that if you have a nice pair of wheels, which luckily today we don't, then you run the risk of scuffing your wheels, especially if you've got a lower profile tire, as we found when we did a traction aid tire test with a Honda Civic. Yeah, that's the right case. All right, so that's in place, and then you can use these guys to sort of kind of tension them, you right, Case? Uh, sort of. That's sort of, kind of, I think, is a good way to describe it. Yeah, kind of sort of tension them. It's kind of sketchy, though. Like this already. Oops. Feel good about that? No, not at all. Yeah. It every doesn't... time, every time I do chains, I'm always sketched out by them. Even ones. Once again, these are supposed to be a chains that fit this car. <laughs> they always seem pretty darn sketchy. Doesn't look brilliant. No, it doesn't feel brilliant either. How long does that take? Four minutes, 31 seconds. That's actually not bad. It's the same so time as the sock. Yeah, so just a little longer than the sock. Feel a little sketchier about these, but let's go see what they do out in the real world. Now for the chains. Now, these ones are surprisingly easy to put on. Um, they do feel a little sketchy to me still. I'm not sure about higher speeds. These are rated at 30 miles an hour, but we'll see how they feel as we accelerate up this hill. So chains are gonna be the, uh, the, the time to beat, hopefully, with the cleats. You ready? Here we go. In three, two, one. Accelerating away. Ooh, pretty good traction in the chains. You definitely feel them though, they do make some noise. And they're not super willing to accelerate quite as fast as I was hoping. Interesting, and across the line there. 10.13, but my fingers are so cold it didn't register the first time I hit start, so. I'd add a second on that. You wanna just do it again? Yeah, let's do it again. All right, 10.13, but his fingers are so cold, being negative five out here, he couldn't hit start. So with the chains, um, I was definitely right on the edge of traction all the way up, but it doesn't feel quite as confident aspiring as the cleats actually. I'm not sure I'd wanna, I'd wanna use this for much longer than a few miles, maybe to get to the top of a summit of a building, or of a, of a, excuse me, of a, um, of a pass. But we'll try them again. Let's get a better re reading. All right, chain part two, accelerating in three, two, one. Okay, got some wheel spin, gotta maintain that. There we go, right on the edge of wheel spin. There we go, now we got a nice amount of grip there, really hooked up about 15 miles an hour. Now I'm accelerating, Ooh, there we go. 11.54, so really, really close, like 0.2 seconds uh, faster than the last go around. All right, interesting, yeah. So that felt pretty good, uh, not quite as grippy off the line as the traction cleats is what I'm calling them. But um, once you got moving, they did feel like they provided a lot of a lot of kind of grip into the soil here. So let's try the braking test. Question is, will he make it up the hill? Okay. 
quite make it up the hill with chains either. Nope. Interesting. Yeah, these the, by far the grippiest that we tried today are those plastic chains. The first ones actually, they really cut into the earth really, really, really well. These ones are not not quite as seamless. And the socks, they feel better than the socks, more grippy than the socks, but not as good as those plastic cleats, which is interesting. Those things were really, really grippy, especially at low speeds. Um, so I'm going to back up with the chains, see if we can get a running start up to the braking test. Oh, I think they fell off. What happened? Uh-oh, Tommy. About chains are always both too tight and too loose. He made it up, didn't look easy though. We're breaking test with the chains. Let's see what happens. There's 10 miles an hour. There's 15. Oh, they came undone again. Ah, oh, he's a pain in the ass. Man, there's so many different style of chains, but I just had the worst luck with them. And these are fitting pretty well, too. Maybe it's the quality of the chain. It's just not very good. 15, 20. Oh, they're coming undone on the brakes. Ooh, really good braking performance with the chain. Look at that. So it kept smooth brake pedal application. Wow, that was significantly better than beforehand. That was 25, too. Look at that. That was pretty good. The chain stopped really, really well. It could be too that the surface is changing just a little bit. It's getting a little bit more torn up here. Um, getting a little bit more gravel poking through. But still, it's still pretty slippery. It stopped over 14 feet shorter than the next best traction aid. Wow, so we're looking at like 56 feet or so mm -hmm. compared to 70 um, on the next best. So the chain's definitely stopped the, stopped the best for sure. We're gonna do the hill climb with the chains. Let's see if we get any higher because so far we haven't gotten very high at all. Ready? All right, trying to limit the wheel spin like in the previous ones. Oh, we definitely got higher. Definitely got higher. All right, Alex, measure it out. All right, you definitely made it the furthest. Yeah. That door closed. About seven foot one inch. So we went about a foot higher than we did with the cleats, which is a small win, but we're still pretty darn far from actually climbing this hill. Yeah. If you want to climb the hill, get all wheel drive. So Alex, Case, and I have thoroughly examined all the traction aids. We have the chains on the raft for it now. We've got the auto sock and we have these little cleats. What's your favorite, Alex? By far the cleats. They uh, were pretty easy to put on. Not exactly the fastest out of all of them, but they were quiet. They seemed to work pretty well. We did break one, but I think that was user error. Um, yeah, they performed really well. And they were the cheapest. Now the chains are the only one of the group that didn't have any mechanical failures. The cleats we probably drove the hardest with the most spinning in the dirt. Uh, but the chains actually held up probably the best. However, they're just clunky. They just need a lot of fiddling and adjustment. And um, certainly speeds over 25 feel really scary. Whereas these felt really good at speeds up to 30. The auto sock was okay. It just didn't quite have the traction of the other two. Yeah, I mean the chains didn't break, but how many times did they come off? Was, yeah, we kept having to refiddle them. Lot. Those little those little rubbery bands. Well let us know what you guys think in the comments below. Big thank you to Case and Alex. Yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Check out alltfl.com. More snow videos to come. Stay warm out there. Appreciate it.